So, three is about these things called complex fractions. All right. You've got a definition up there. Um, it's simply the idea of having fractions on top of fractions. So, it's a fraction and it's complex. Complex meaning ugly looking, right? So, we've got a complicated looking fraction. And here are just some examples of these things. So it says it's got fractions in the numerator or denominator or both. So here's an example of both, okay? So if you have something like this, okay? Okay, that would be an example of a complex fraction that has fractions in the numerator and denominator, right? Here is an example of a fraction that only has um, fractions in, say, the denominator. Okay? So it's still a complex fraction, but it only has fractions in the denominator instead of both. Okay? So pretty much if you see an ugly looking fraction, it's probably a complex fraction. And guess what? As usual, our job is to simplify, right? So we're going to take these yucky-looking fractions and make them look a lot nicer. Okay. Um, there are many different methods of doing this, okay? So if you've seen this before, if you've learned this before, you're welcome to use your own method, okay? Um, as long as you do it correctly, I really don't mind you using your own version of this. Uh, in class, we're going to use the LCD because we've just spent a whole week last week learning about the common denominators, right? So since we just learned about common denominators, we're going to apply to solving these. So this is the three-step process for using the LCD to simplify complex fractions. Step one, find the LCD. Now, the LCD of what? You're finding the LCD of all the little fractions, okay? So if you look at that example that we just had, you're looking at all of those little fractions on top and bottom and finding one, a single LCD for all of those combined, okay? Once you have that, you're going to multiply every piece of that problem by the LCD, okay? And then if we do it right, what will happen is we'll be able to cancel out pretty much all the denominators, okay? And so now you'll be left with a fraction, but a single large fraction instead of a bunch of little fractions all over the place, okay? So all the little fractions should cancel out if we do it right, okay? So here's an example of how this goes. Do we agree that this is a complex fraction? Yes. Yeah, right? It's a fraction and it looks complicated, so it's a complex fraction. How many little denominators do we see? Three, right? So we've got the x squared, the x, and the 5. Okay? So we need to find a single LCD <coughs> for all three of these. Bless you. Okay, so what would be the LCD for x squared, x, and 5? Five, 5x squared. squared, okay. What do we think? Are we in agreement on that? Yeah. Right, constant-wise, we only have one constant, so that's the 5, okay? And then letter-wise, even though it sort of looks like we have two different factors, right, we have the x squared and the x, the x squared is really just xx, right? So because x squared is just xx, it's still just the x factor, right? And so we take the x, and then we take the highest power that we've seen, so we have an x squared and an x, so the highest power of those is the square. Okay, so that's why we take the x squared instead of the x. Okay? So step one, complete. Step two, take this and multiply every piece of it, so every one of these little fractions, and multiply it by the LCD. Okay? So right now... We're just going to do a lot of writing, okay? It's, we're not actually doing any math at this moment, right? We're just having to write quite a bit. <coughs> okay. 
And notice that what I'm doing with my LCD, I'm writing it as 5x squared over 1 instead of just the regular 5x squared. I'm doing that because I'm multiplying it into fractions, right? Like all the rest of the stuff that's already there was a fraction. And so since I'm going to be multiplying, if I write it as a fraction, it's easier for me to see what's on top, what's on bottom, and what will cancel, right? Because with fractions, if you're multiplying two fractions, you can cancel diagonally, right? And so if I write that 5x squared as a fraction, I can see better what's diagonal and what's not. Does that make sense? So what all is going to cancel? The 5x squared... Let's do the easy ones. Can I do this? What about the x's on this uh, top right fraction set, like up here? What's going to cancel there? The x, right? So remember, remember that x squared just means xx, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I'm doing that, this x cancels out with one of these x's. And so I still have an x left. Okay, so we usually kind of write it like this, right? We just cross out the two. Does everybody see that? That the x cancels out with the square, leaving us just a single x on top? Okay, so now that we've canceled that as much as we can, let's write down what's left. Okay, let's sort of keep track of where we are at this point. So we have the 2 and the 5, and that's it, right? It's divided by 1. So do we really need to write that? No, right? Divided by 1 is just the same thing, right? So we can skip that. We have the 3 and the 5x, right? If we get too sloppy, we might miss that x. Now let's remember, we didn't cancel out the whole x squared. Only one of those x's went away. And I'm totally okay with you guys skipping this step, okay? You're welcome to go ahead and just proceed straight to, okay, well, 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15, right? Okay. We write every step on the board so that when you get home and you're looking over your notes, you know exactly where it all came from. And then we have the x squared, x squared. So what is that going to become? Because what do we do when we're multiplying x's? We add the exponents, right? Again, think of it as the square is just xx, xx, right? So we have two squares, so two xx's. And so how many x's do we have together? Four, right? So that's where the x to the fourth power came from. All right, so the final question, I guess. Can we do anything? So the other class suggested a few things. So the other class suggested that we could combine the 10 and the 15. Can we do that? No. 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 Why not? So, all right, so that's actually the explanation for the next thing they said. The reason why I can't combine the 10 and the 15 is the apples bananas, right? Because the 10 is just apples and the 15x is bananas, right? Because one has an x, one doesn't. Okay, so I can't combine something that has x's with something that doesn't have x's, right? They're separate things. So I can't put my 10 apples with my 15 bananas. All right, so I can't combine those two. What about canceling out the x and the x to the fourth? So this is the preschooler problem, right? Yeah, well, so the 15 I could skip because the 15 and the X are just kind of standing next to each other, right? But the 10 I would have to take, right? And so since I don't have a 10 minus on the bottom, I can't do anything, right? So everybody see that? If you've, I know it's been a long time. You haven't seen me in four days. So, but remember with the preschoolers here, right? These guys are holding hands, right? So if I'm going to cancel this X, I have to cancel out this whole thing, right? And I don't have another copy of it, so this is it. Okay. But I can do something. So those two things that the other class suggested didn't work. 
you guys weren't fooled, right? But what can I do? Yeah, definitely. So what's that going to leave me with? Yeah. Now, does it look useful? And do you feel like you've really accomplished anything important? No, I wouldn't either. Um, we do it because sometimes there's a chance that when we do it, we can cancel some more, right? So if we get lucky, we can't, you know, we factored out something, and at the end, we ended up with, say, like an x to the fourth or something, well, then we could have factored out, you know, we could have canceled out that x to the fourth with this x to the fourth or something like that. But not, no such luck, right? Okay, so we still can't cancel. So this is it. And by the way, this is a minus in case you can't see that. Right? So this is it. This is our answer. Now, on the exam, if I don't say factor your answer completely, then I'll accept either one of those two that I have circled up there, either the red one or the black one. Okay? If I don't ask you to, to factor, then either one of those is fine. Um, on my math lab, if I remember correctly, they usually ask to give the answer in factored form. Right? Okay, and so when they ask that, you have to give the right hand most, okay? The black, the one that I circled in black, okay? Because that's the factor that form. So just make sure you read directions. That's honestly the only reason that you're penalized for giving the answer in the wrong form. It's not that it's a wrong answer. It's that you didn't read directions, okay? So, mm-hmm. Can we use our notes on the quiz? On the homework and quiz, yes. On the exam, no. On the exam, you'll be allowed a note card. So when it's about a week prior to the exam, I'll hand you guys out note cards, and then you can use the front and back of a note card. Okay. Can we usually go over and review? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We spend a day um, going over. Like, I'll hand you a review, uh, an exam review, uh, probably a week to a week and a half in advance, and then um, the class period before the exam, we have a review. So we go over that review sheet. And so you're given the review sheet, you're given the note card, and yet um, you'll probably be disappointed with your score. I don't know why, but I think it's because I give you guys the review, and I'm not speaking to you literally because you haven't taken an exam, but historically speaking, uh, students given the review, given a note card, I feel like they just decide, oh, well, I guess I'm prepared and don't actually study. So take your time, study, okay? Just because you have a note card doesn't mean you don't have to study, right? You still have to know how to use that note card and which piece of your note card goes with each problem. Okay, so just the getting ready for the exam. Okay, so let's try another one. Do we agree this is a complex fraction? Okay, it's a fraction and it looks complex, so... All right, so what's our first step? LCD. LCD, and what's the LCD in this case? <clears throat> X plus seven. Is that it? Any more? Any less? Does that help? All right, so we're finding the LCD for all the little denominators, right? So this denominator, this denominator, and this denominator, right? If you were thinking, so somebody mentions just seven. The reason why just seven is not a part of it is because that seven is not actually a denominator, is it? Not a little denominator, okay? So we're looking at little denominators only, meaning, you know, denominators <laughs> of little fractions. So if I write that 7 as a fraction, the 7 is the numerator, the 1 is the denominator, right? Okay, so you guys are getting there. This is not quite it. What are we missing? The X. The X, right? So we don't have any coefficients, so we don't have to worry about constants, but in terms of factors, there are two different factors, right? The x plus 7 doesn't cover the x because x plus 7, preschoolers holding hands, are stuck, right? I mean, x plus 7 are together, okay? 
So x is a different item altogether, right? You have the x plus 7 item, and then you have the x item, okay? So they're different factors, so we have to take them both. They don't have any exponents, so we can't make up exponents, right? We can only take what was there to begin with. So this is it. So what do we do next? Exactly. All right. So, again, this is kind of a time-consuming step, but it's just a matter of writing, right? We're not actually doing any calculations or anything. that that's what it looks like after we just multiply everything by the LCD. So next we cancel. So remembering that we can only cancel things that are actually identical, what's going to cancel is we're going to have the x plus 7, x plus 7 cancel, right? The x cancel with the x. And what about the denominator? What do we think? Do they cancel? So I'm seeing some no's and some yeses. So when we're canceling fractions, we can only cancel them if they're diagonal, right? On opposite levels, right? Mm -hmm. So we can only cancel something from top if there's an identical copy of it on bottom. So let's look at that 7 first. This 7, do I have an identical 7 somewhere on bottom? No, right? What about this? Do I have an identical x plus 7? And what about the x? I pretty much have nothing on bottom, right? So because I don't have anything on bottom, I can't cancel anything. Uh, and so you might be thinking, well, that's going to be kind of unfortunate because it's not going to clean up very well. But you'll see that all we have is the over 1s, right? Mm -hmm. Over 1s, do they do anything? Mm -hmm. No, so we can just skip them. Now that, now that we're done multiplying and canceling, right, we can just skip the over 1s. So like this x plus 7 and this x plus 7? Yeah. Could you or no? All right. So what do you guys think? No. Why not? So they are on opposite levels. I mean, this is on top. This is on bottom, right? As in top of the big fraction, bottom of the big fraction. Okay. So that's not the problem. The problem is this minus right here. Right? Because if... So let me write down what we have left. So after we've multiplied, what we have left is... Right? Oh, okay. I get it. Okay? All right. Thank you. So now that we have this left, we can see that we can't cancel the x plus 7 because it's holding hands with the x. Right? The one on top is right here. These guys are holding hands. So we can't take this guy because there's not an x minus x plus 7 on the bottom. But we can do something. We can factor out, or we can distribute the negative, right? Well, that's good because x minus x just can cancel, right? One is positive, one is negative, right? So it's like I have an x, but I owe you an x, so I don't really have an x because I have to give it to you. And so if you look at what's left, this is really going to come out nice, right? Because what's the last thing I can do? Cancel the 7, right? What's negative 7 divided by 7? So not plus, but divided by. What's negative 7 divided by 7? And what's 7 divided by 7? 1. 
right? So we're just going to have a one on bottom. And so why did I write the one on top but not the one on bottom? Because on bottom I had a bunch of other stuff, right? And so a bunch of other stuff times one is still a bunch of other stuff. Okay? On top, the one was the only thing left, so I better write it, otherwise there's just like a missing gap. So doesn't that look so much better? You don't have to multiply the x with the x. The Good question. So you actually want to keep them factored. Yeah, so the denominator especially, okay? The denominator especially, you always want to keep factored out. Okay. So it actually saves you time, right? That way you get to quit right here instead of having to multiply it out. But the reason why we always keep the denominator factored is so that if there's something in the numerator that could cancel, we can do that. All right. One more in this section. Now, when you look at this, does it, does it look like a complex fraction? No, right? I mean, the definition of a complex fraction was you had fractions in the numerator or denominator or both, and you don't have any fractions on this one, right? I mean, it's like a fraction, but you don't have fraction inside of a fraction, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at this, you might be thinking, well, that's just a normal rational expression, right? What we've been learning about in this whole chapter is rational expressions. Um, so let's, let's make sure, let's go back to our first day of chapter 6. We had a definition of rational expressions which said it's a polynomial divided by a polynomial, right? I mean, that was the definition of a rational expression. First line in your notes, polynomial divided by polynomial. Okay, so now let's go back to chapter 5, which hopefully by now everybody has gone, has done, right? So going back to chapter 5 review, the definition of a polynomial is you have a string of x's and constants, and the important thing is that your x's, have non-negative whole number powers, okay? That was the definition of a polynomial, okay? In polynomials, the exponents have to be positive or zero and whole numbers, okay? So are these polynomials? No, because are the powers positive? No. No. Right, so the powers are negative, so these are not polynomials, which means this is not a polynomial divided by a polynomial, which means this is not a rational expression, right? How can we make it into one? I mean, to make it into a rational expression, I'd have to make all of these negatives into positives, right? Mm -hmm. What do negative exponents mean? Or what do they do? Don't you like bring the a1 down to make it positive? And then... Yes. Yeah. Right? If you have a negative exponent, so this is going back to when you guys learned exponents, um, when you have a negative exponent, it flips whatever was under it. So like, if you have a to the negative power, it flips to a, right? No, yes, do you remember that vaguely? Okay, negative exponents make the number flip, okay? So here's what we mean. So if you have, say, a to the negative 1, it makes the a flip, okay? Okay. And of course, a to the 1 is just a, right? So we could just write it like this. So it's kind of along the same lines. If you had a to the negative 2, the negative makes it flip, but you keep the number. So the negative makes it flip, and then you keep the 2. Okay. So you'll still have an a squared, but it's now in the denominator instead of in the numerator. Okay. And just, we don't need it here, but just FYI, um, if your negative exponent is already in the denominator, it flips it back into the numerator. Okay? But we'll see some of that later, later on in the course. Okay, so now that we know how to do this, let's apply it to those pieces that we have. Okay. When you have an exponent, if you have parentheses around something, say like this, okay? then that exponent applies to both a and b, right? If you don't have the parentheses, then what does that negative apply to? Just the b. Just the b, okay? So keep that in mind when you're looking at these. The negative 2 on that second piece on top only applies to the b, but not to the a. But, all right, so we've got a to the negative 1, so that flips the a, right? 
It keeps the power 1, but since a to the power 1 is just a, we don't actually write the 1. Right, we just leave it as an a. Okay? Then, does the a over here get flipped? This, this a here. Does it get flipped? <coughs> no. Nope. Okay, so that stays the same. What about the b? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it gets flipped, and it keeps its square, right? It had a square. The only thing that happened is you take the negative and use that negative to flip the letter B. And then do the same thing on bottom. So A does not get flipped. B does. Right? And then here, both A and B get flipped. However, sort of at different rates, right? I mean, they both have a different exponent. They both have a negative exponent, so they both get flipped, but uh, the A gets a square, right, and the B gets a 1. So if you're thinking, wait, why aren't these separate fractions, right, because it should be something like this, right? I mean, do we agree that that would be, if we flip them right, that's what we should get, right? And so why did I write them like I did? Because they're both fractions and they're multiplied together, right? So if I'm multiplying fractions, I simply multiply across. What's 1 times 1? One, right? And then a squared times b is a squared times b. And so I simply took those two fractions and multiplied them across. And then that way I have fewer fractions and it's just a little bit less complicating looking and uh, hopefully a little easier to find the LCD that way. Okay. All right, so now do we have a complex fraction? Yeah, definitely do. Okay, so we have a complex fraction. So let's clean it up. What's our first step? LCD. Now, we're looking for the LCD for these little bitty denominators, right? So what do you think? A squared, B squared. A squared, B squared, all right. Everybody agree? If you don't, ask. Okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, in the first step, why did you put the A, I mean the B squared, under the A? Okay, so it's kind of the same um, idea as the A negative 2, B negative 2. So here's how it looks. We have the A, right, that doesn't get flipped. And then we have the B that does get flipped, right? And then if I write this as a fraction okay. and multiply across, I can combine them. How did you get the a squared b squared for the LCD? All right, so we don't have any constants, right? Mm -hmm. And so then if we look at the different letters, we have the letter A and the letter B, right? Oh, you take the biggest. And then okay. you take the biggest powers, exactly. Okay. And it doesn't have to, the biggest power doesn't have to happen on the same day for both letters. So like the a squared got its biggest power on this day, right? And then b squared got its biggest power on these two days. All right, so now that we have the LCD, what do we do next? Exactly. So we're going to take this and multiply every piece by the LCD. And yes, it will be big and complicated looking. So I totally agree, these are time consuming, but at least it's like the same exact procedure for every problem. So, Can anybody see that? So I just rewrote my original problem putting the LCD next to each fraction. And now we cancel, right? So we cancel as much as we absolutely can. Uh, let's do the easy stuff first, like the, you know, B squared, right? A squared. Like the things that cancel out exactly, right? If they're identical, they're just 
they just cancel. Um, the others, it's sort of like a partial canceling, right? Like the A up here cancels with, oops, not this one. No, this one. All right, this A. So we'll, we'll, these two? No. Or the top one over there and the bottom one. Yeah. Like that? All right, so. The other one. Just Parsons. one, right? You just one over. cross it. Too. Yeah. Well, I can't. So I can't go across fractions. Or across pluses and minuses. Okay. So I can, yeah, I can only cancel them if they're multiplied. Okay. So, yeah, the only one that I could cancel any of these with would be within the two fractions that are multiplied. Does that help? Right. Okay. And so I'm going to cancel this A with only one of these A's, right? Because I only have one down here. So I'm going to cancel this with one of those, leaving me just a single A. It's not like you're canceling the square. It's just that you A squared stands for AA. You cancel that one of the A's, so there's only one A left. And then the same idea is going to happen here, right? You've got B. This is BB up here, so one of those B's cancels out with one of the B's on bottom. So let's, let's write down what we have left so that we don't lose anything. We have one A left on top, right? So we only cancel that one of those. Um, we have B squared left. And it's all times one and divided by one, so we can skip those, right? We have this A and the A squared. And yes, we will combine them in just a minute. You're welcome to do it right now if you want. Is everybody a goo? Too much, right? There. Uh, and yeah, there's no way. Sorry, guys, I was looking at the completely wrong place there. There we go. All right, so is this what we have left? Yes. All right, so now if we combine, what's A, A squared? A cubed, right? Because it's just like having A and then A, A, right? So all together we have three A's, so it's an A cubed. Almost done. What else can I do? Anything? Can you cancel the cube? So can we? What do you guys think? Can we cancel the A cube? Yeah. Seeing some no's, hearing some yeses, seeing some yeses, seeing some more no's. Can you take out an A? Alright, so I can't take out an A. Now, going back to the A cubed, I'm going to side with the no's on that one. And here's why. What's between the a b squared and the a cubed? A plus. So can I take just the a cubed? No. If I take the a cubed, right, I would have to take it with his friend, and I don't have one of those on the bottom, right? Same thing here. If I take this a cubed, I would have to take him with his friend, and I don't have one of those on top. Okay, so I can't cancel out the a cubed, right, because of the plus minus between them. Okay. If it was multiplication, definitely. Okay, like if this was a times here and a times there, I could cancel them out. But we can, as was suggested, take out an A on top. Right, anything else? Well, it'll be an A squared because we pulled out an A, right? So we, um, what we did is we took an A out of here and an A out of there. So if we take one of those three, that leaves us with the two. Okay. okay. 
All right. We made it. All right? So, any questions about 6.3? I warned you it wasn't going to be fun. All right, 6.4. Division. Okay, so we're going to start with sort of a small case of division, and then we're going to move into long division. Now, the assumption is that you guys have all seen long division performed on numbers, okay? Right? So we've all, it might have been a while, but we've all seen how to divide numbers using long division, okay? We're going to now take that concept and apply it to letters, okay? But before we get to that, let's look at something smaller, okay? So um, just a few terms while we're on this. Okay, what's a monomial? Well, in a polynomial, each one of those chunks is considered a term, okay? So, like here, I have three terms. One, two, three, okay? So this polynomial here in the parentheses has three terms. One, two, three. How many terms does this one have? One, one right? Terms are separate, separated by pluses and minuses, okay? So it's like those preschoolers holding hands, okay? So you're counting how many preschoolers are holding hands. Okay, so here we've got three of them. Here we just have one, right? He's not holding hands with anybody. Okay, so those are polynomials, and you know each one of these is considered a term. So you name polynomials based on how many terms they have. Okay, so monomials are polynomials with a single term, right? Mono meaning one. So a one-term polynomial is a monomial. So that's what this is, okay? This guy right here is a monomial. A polynomial with two terms would be considered a binomial because it has two terms. So bi, two, two-term binomial, okay? What do you think a three-term polynomial would be? A trinomial, okay? Try for three, so trinomials have three terms. And after that, we quit naming them anything special and we just group them all together as polynomials, but... Um, so no quadronomials and quantumonomials and anything like that, but we just go after tri trinomials, okay? So what we're looking at in this case is any polynomial divided by a monomial, okay? So divided by a single term. If you're dividing by more, by more than a single term, you can't apply this method, okay? So just keep that in mind. That's why we'll have long division, okay? All right, so here's how it goes. You take your division problem and, first of all, just rewrite it so that it looks like a fraction, okay? It's a lot easier to divide things, in my mind, if they look like they're divided, okay? So write them as a division, that's the vertical form, okay? And then, remember what I've been talking about this whole semester, right? The guys on top are holding hands, so we can't separate them, right? Okay, so if I'm going to cancel out one of them, I have to cancel out all of them, right? Okay, so if I'm going to do anything to one of those preschoolers, it's going to have to be the same thing to all of them, okay? So if you give a piece of candy to one, everybody wants a piece of candy, right? So think of that 10x cubed, y cubed, as giving those kids piece of, pieces of candy, okay? So if you're going to divide by the 10x cubed, y cubed, if you do it to one, you have to do it to all. So that's what that second step is. You're going to divide each term by the monomial, okay, by that denominator. Here's how it looks. It's really simple if you just write it down. You're taking the first one divided by the denominator. Take the second one. Divided by the denominator. We'll test how small I can write. And then the last one divided by the denominator. Okay? So again, you're making sure that you're fair to all of these poor little preschoolers, right? So you just broke up that problem instead of having one long division, or not long, one single division, you have three little divisions, okay? And now you can simplify each individually. So you look at one fraction at a time and clean it up. So what's 40 divided by 10? Four. Four. 
<clears throat> okay, now think about those X's. You have four of them on top, three of them on bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So when you start canceling, what's going to be left? X. An X, and it's going to be on top, right? Okay. What about the Y's? They cancel, they cancel out completely, right? You have three of them on top, three of them bo on bottom, so there are no Ys left when you're done, right? Mm -hmm. so those are gone. All right, what about the next one? What's negative 20 divided by 10? Two. two. Yep. What about the Xs? Cancel. Okay, they just cancel. Okay, what about the Y? One over Y. Yeah, right, because we have two Y's on top, three Y's on bottom, so when you start canceling, the leftover Y is going to be on bottom, right? So he has to stay there. All right, so he's on bottom. So here's a way that you could write this. Right? We can combine, fra like, because it's just a fraction next to a fraction, right? So we can combine them together so that they're on the same line. Because they came from the same fraction, the two... And the y, both came from the same fraction, right? The 2 was on top, the y was on bottom. And so are we okay with writing them as a still one fraction? What about that last one? 50 divided by 10 is? 5. Okay. And uh, in terms of letters, what do we have left? Well, let's see, we've got x, x, y on top, and then x, 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 y, y, y on bottom, right? So if we start canceling, <clears throat> yeah, we have an x and a y squared. Right, we have a single x and then two y's. Mm -hmm. And they're both on bottom, right? Mm -hmm. That's it? Yep, that's it. So just make sure that you keep in mind where your leftovers are going, okay? Which, was it the numerator or the denominator that had more of that letter, right? Because whichever one had more, that's where the leftovers are going to stay. Okay? So let's try another one, okay? just for practice. Step one, write it vertically, okay? So write it so it looks like a fraction. And then break it up into how many individual fractions are we going to have here? Four, right? So break it up into four fractions. And then you get to do the cleanup four times, right? All right, so four goes into 16 four times. Mm -hmm. And then what about the x's? X squared. Okay, does everybody agree? We have <coughs> three x, bless you, three x's on top, one x on bottom, right? So out of the three on top, one cancels with the bottom, so leaving us two on top. Okay, then we've got four goes into 32 eight times. Mm -hmm. What about the x's? Just an x, right? Because we have two on top, one on the bottom. Okay, so one cancels, leaving you one. Okay, what about this one? One half. One half, right? So the x's yeah. cancel, right? The x's cancel, and then two over four reduces to a one half. Okay, and then one more. So the fours cancel, and what do we have left? X. One over. One over x, right? So the x was on the bottom to begin with, so we've got to keep it on the bottom. Okay. Now, by the way, can you combine any of these as like terms? No. no. Okay. Think of these as like apples, bananas, pears, and peaches. Okay. They're all different because 
This one has a square on it, right? So it's different from that one, which doesn't. This one doesn't have a square, and this one doesn't have a square, but this one is upside down, right? The x is in the denominator, so that's different than that one. And this one doesn't have any x's on it at all. So these are all different. Um, and if you're, if you're having a hard time seeing why the 8x and the 1 over x are different, the 1 over x is really x to the negative 1, right? Now is it clear to see that that's different than the 8x? Right. Okay, so this is it. And by the way, if you weren't able to combine any like terms in the original problem, you're not going to be able to combine any like terms in the end, okay? Because they came from the original problem. So if these couldn't have been combined, these can't be combined either. Because you put, divided them all by the same number, right? So, okay. So any questions about the monomial? Nope. Okay. Then let's take you back into the good old days when all you study was numbers and no letters, right? Life was simple. And you divided something like 624 divided by 4. Okay? So, this would, it's kind of like you started out with a problem like this, okay? And you had to divide it, okay? And without a calculator. This is, I know all of you, you know, there has always been a calculator. But, um, you know, think that you're a little older than you are, and calculators haven't been invented. You, you know, you don't have one, uh, and you have to do this by hand. Okay, so hopefully, everybody has seen how to do this, right? What was the first thing you did? Okay, the four into the six. All right, so four goes into six how many times? Once. Once, and then you put the answer on top, right? Let me use a different color here. There. Okay. So 4 goes into 6 once. And then what did you do with the 1? Okay, so you multiplied it like that. And then what did you put that? All right, and then you subtract it. Everybody good with that? So we did 4 divided, or 4 goes into 6 once. You put the 1 on top. 1 times 4 is 4, so you put the 4 under the 6 and then subtract the 4 from the 6. So you get a 2, right? And then you bring down the next number. Because if all you have is the 2, that's not enough, right? You can't keep going. Like, does 4 go into a 2? No. Right? So you can't keep going. We've got to drop something. Okay? So you go ahead and bring down the next number. And now you repeat, right? Okay, just over and over. So 4 goes into 22 how many times? 5. Okay? And then what do you do with that 5? Multiply it. All right. So 5 times 4 is? 20. And then? And then you subtract, right? 4 doesn't go into 2, so we bring down the next number to help us out. 4, four goes into 24. Six. And then we go 6 times 4 is. Mm -hmm. And then we subtract. Yeah, right? Now, everybody remember, we call this the quotient. <coughs> right? And this the remainder. Now, wouldn't the remainder be a decimal? If you have one, yes. Mm -hmm. And you knew to quit when you couldn't go anymore, right? I mean, does 4 go into 0? No, right? And is there anything else left to drop down? No. Okay, so you've exhausted all the possibilities, so that's how you know you're at the end of the problem. Okay? Well, guess what? Doing long division on variables follows the exact same procedure, except you're going to have letters instead of just numbers, okay? But the process is identical, okay? So here it is. Um, which, by the way, before you get the process, vocabulary terms, these, again, should be familiar to you because they're not dependent on the x's, okay? They're the same, let or the same words that you would use on numbers as you do on letters, okay? So this problem is like... 4x plus 7 divided by x plus 2 equals 4, and the remainder is 1, right? So do we agree that this down here is the divisor? Because you're dividing it by it, right? So that's the divisor. This is the quotient, this is the remainder, and this is what we call the dividend. It's the thing you're dividing. So that's your starting po point 
and you divide that by your divisor. Okay? So that way, just as we're going through these, when you hear one of these words, you know what I'm referring to. All right. Here comes the fun part. Okay, so if you're asked to divide a polynomial by something that's not a monomial, why is the x plus 2 not a monomial? Or is it? How many terms in the x plus 2? Two, right? We've got x and 2. They're holding hands, so there are two of them. So is that a monomial? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes two. So you have two. So it's, it's a binomial, right? All right. It's, an, it's not a monomial, so the method that we've just learned of you know, breaking it up into smaller fractions does not, does not apply at all. Okay? All right. Well, so if it doesn't apply, this is why we do a new method, the long division. So your first step is just set it up so it looks like long division, okay? So you've got your original problem and then your divisor on the left of that, okay? Make a nice line so that you have room for putting your answers on top of the line. And another thing to, to be looking out for is as you're setting it up, make sure that you've got your powers ordered from the highest to the lowest. Now with numbers, you didn't have to worry about that because if I tell you the number is 624, You all know that 624 is 624, right? I mean, that's already in order. This is the 600s, 2 10s, and 4 1s, right? There's no confusion about that. With polynomials, people could sort of be messy and write them in whatever order, okay? We always want our highest powers first and then down to the lowest powers. Here, you automatically have your hundreds first, right? Then the tens and then the ones. Okay, so you kind of want to do that here. Okay, make sure that your powers are arranged from highest to lowest. Um, because if you don't, then you will never know if you're actually done or not. Okay? Because, like here, once you run out of ones, you know there's nothing smaller than a one, right? Here, if you mix your x's so that like you have like x squared first and then x to the tenth power later, you don't know if you're ever going to come across something that you can go into. Okay, so make sure your powers are nicely arranged. Which that's done here, right? We have the cube, the square, the x, and then the constant. Okay. All right. So going back to your 624 divided by 4 example. The first thing you did, you said 4 goes into 6, right? Mm -hmm. Another way to say that is 6 divided by 4, right? And 6 divided by 4 is 1, so you put your 1 up here. Okay. So what would be sort of the things that are equivalent to that? Instead of 4 and 6, on this example, what do you think you're dividing? Exactly. Right? Because think of this problem as it's the first item of your dividend and the first item in your divisor. Okay? That's all you care about is here, you weren't looking at the whole 624, right? Not at once. You were looking at just the 6. You're looking at the first digit in the problem. Same thing here. Look at the quote-unquote digit. Okay, so you're looking at the x cubed. All right, so what's x cubed divided by x? x squared, right? Now, you're going to put that, on t as you can see there, you can put that on top of the line, right? But you want to make sure you line things up. So x squareds are going to line up with x squareds, x cubes are going to line up with x cubes, and so on, okay? So that's why we put that x squared on top of the 5x squared, just to make sure that everything is nicely lined up. So do we see how we got the x squared? Okay, x cubed divided by x is x squared. Now, once you figured out that on the 624 problem that this was a 1, what did you do with it? You multiplied it, right? You took the 1 and you multiplied it by the divisor, right? Do the same thing here. You have the x squared, multiply it 
by the entire divisor. Okay, so that's your next step in the process. Okay? Square. And you multiply it by the divisor. So you multiply it by the x plus 2. Well, what's x squared times x? X cubed, right? Now, where are you going to put that? Yeah, under the x cubed, right? With this, when you said 1 times 4 is 4, you put it under the 6, right? Same thing here. x squared times x is x cubed, so I put it under the x cubed. What about x squared times 2? What's x squared times 2? 2x squared. 2x squared, so we put it under the x squared. Why is the x squared on top of the 5x squared instead of on top of the x cubed? Because we want to line up all the powers. Okay. So it's kind of like here, this was a 100, right? So the 100 got lined up with the 600. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now, after you multiplied and put your x cubed and your 2x squared under, well, back here, what did you do with the 6 and the 4? Okay. Subtract it, right? Do the same thing here. So you're subtracting that x cubed 2x squared from the x cubed 5x squared. Um, and I like, I personally like to just actually put the negative there so I can see it happening. Um, so I usually just do this. Okay? Again, just so I see that it's a minus. All right, so x cubed minus x cubed is x cubed minus x cubed is zero, right? And this is kind of how you know that you're on the right track, okay? If that first column doesn't cancel out, then you've probably messed up somewhere, okay? So it's kind of like a little error check in the middle of the problem, okay? Your first column should always cancel out. So x cubed minus x cubed is nothing, so there's nothing there. What about 5x squared minus 2x squared? 3x squared, right? Okay, so you're at this point on your 624 problem, right? What did you do next? Drop down the 2, right? Okay, so you're going to do the exact same thing here. Except instead of dropping a 2, you're dropping a 7x, right? Just drop the next item that hasn't been used yet. Right? Right there. You're dropping the 7x. All right, this is where we were just a minute ago, right? The last picture that we saw looked like this, right? And then we dropped down the 7x. Can you subtract the 5 and the 2 to get the 3? Yep. Okay, now once you dropped the 2 on the 624 problem, what did you do next? Multiply by 5. So, so you went 4, yeah, 4 goes into 22 5 times, mm -hmm. right? Pretty much, you started repeating yourself? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's exactly what you're going to do here. It's just, okay, what you've just done, repeat all over again until you can't do it anymore. Okay, so repeat, repeat, repeat. Well, what's 3x squared divided by x? Because that's where you are right now, right? You're looking at this and this, right? Because you're starting over. And to start over, you're looking at how much of this goes into this, right? So what's 3x squared divided by x? 3x, right? And then that's your answer, so you put it on top. That's where the answers go, right? And you line it up with the x's, right? So the 3x squared goes on top of the 7, or the 3x goes on top of the 7x, so that our x's are lined up. Okay, so you did the dividing. What do you do after the dividing? 
multiply, right? So you multiply that new part of your answer, okay, so that's 3x times the entire divisor, right? Like on this problem back here, four, you, we're doing the 5 times the 4, right? Okay, so what's 3x times x? Squared. What's 3x times 2? So you've multiplied, you aligned everything, right? And then when you got to that point on your problem here, 22 and 20, what did you do? You subtracted, right? So you're going to subtract two. And again, I like to just actually put my minus into it, so this is what it would look like for me. Okay? So what's 3x squared minus 3x squared? 0. And then 7x minus 6x? X. And that's where we got this x. Okay? Alright, so this is where you are. What would you do now? Exactly. Right? Drop down the next number and then repeat. So what are we going to drop here? plus 2, right? Okay, now for a minute, don't look at the whole thing, just let's look at it at one step at a time, okay? So you dropped a 2, okay? So this is where you are right now, okay? You dropped the 2. And now you do the division, right? So you go x, like this x, right? Divided by this x, which is equal to one, right? Because we're dividing. And then we put that one up here. Then we take that one and we multiply it, right? By the divisor. So what's one times x? x. And what's one times two? Two, right? And you line those up. Okay, so that's where this came from. You just line those up under each other. Okay? Once you've got them lined up, you're almost done, right? You subtract. What's x minus x? Zero. And 2 minus 2? Zero. So that's your remainder, right? You can't go any further because there's nothing left. Okay, so our remainder is zero. What's our quotient? Yeah. Right? So when you're writing your answer, this is what it would look like, right? There was no remainder, so you don't have to write the remainder because there's nothing there. All you have to write is the quotient itself. Any questions about that one? Well, here is a summary of all of those steps. So it's all the stuff that we just did, but summarized instead of, you know, all spread out all over the page. Because if you look at it, all we had, we really had like four steps that we just kept doing over and over and over. All right? Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, over and over and over until you ran out of stuff. Well, then let's do one more problem just to make sure that we all get it. So first thing we definitely want to do is write this so it looks like a long division problem, right?
And by the way, as we're doing this, we should be making sure that everything is in order, right? Highest power to lowest power. And it is, right? We have 5, 3, 2, 1, 0. Right, 0 as in there are no x's. Um, and so you might, uh, for a minute, minute there, be concerned about the fact that we don't have an x to the fourth, right? Um, and if that does concern you, uh, which sometimes that is a big deal, um, you can just sort of spread them out, like leave a gap for the x to the fourth power. <clears throat> so you can write your x to the fifth, leave just a small little gap where the x to the fourth would have been, and then write down your x to the third, okay? So what, what are we going to do first? We've arranged it, so that's yeah, divide, right? Which ones are we dividing this time? Exactly. The first by the first, right? So you're dividing this one by this one, right? The first one by the first one. What is 3x to the fifth divided by x squared? Yes. All right. 3x to the third power. All right. So where are we going to put that? Above the x to the third. Exactly. We want these to be nicely lined up, right? Then what do we do? Multiply it. Okay. So we're going to drop this and multiply it like that, right? Okay, what is 3x cubed times x squared? 3x to the fifth, okay. And what is 3x to the third times negative 2? Okay, so we've got negative 6x cubed, and that's going to line up under the cubes, right? What next? Subtract. Subtract, okay, so does everybody agree that if I'm subtracting a negative number, it's like adding, right? Minus minus would be a plus. Okay, so what we're going to have left, 3x to the fifth minus 3x to the fifth is zero. Uh, negative x to the third plus 6x cubed is I heard negative 7, positive 6, 5, right? Right? You owe me a dollar, but I owe you 6. So if we want to get even, I owe you 5. Right? All right, so we subtract it. What next? Bring down. Okay, so we're going to bring down the 4x squared. And then we repeat, right? Mm -hmm. So we divide the first one by the first one. What is 5x cubed divided by x squared? Okay, so the answer is 5x. Where am I going to put that 5x? Exactly. Okay, so we're going to kind of have a little gap there, right? But that's okay. <clears throat> And then we multiply it, right? Mm -hmm. So what's 5x times x squared? 5x and 5x times negative 2? Mm -hmm. Ooh, negative 10x. So I should probably put it over here, right? <clears throat> no, you still lining them up? Yeah, so I still have to line them up, right? And so that looks a little bit yucky. So are you bringing down that 4x? So what we're actually going to have to do is we're going to have to bring down the 12, right? Does everybody see that? We all of a sudden encountered an x before we were ready for it, right? So if I'm going to subtract the 10x, I have to have something to subtract it from, right? So I have to bring the x down so that I can combine them. Okay. And so now we subtract, which means this is going to be negative, this is going to be positive. Okay, so let's, let's see. We've got 5x cubed minus 5x cubed. So that's 0, right? 
Now what about 4x squared <coughs> minus nothing? It's still 4x squared, right? Because there was, it's kind of like there's nothing here, right? So I'm not subtracting anything. Mm -hmm. And then finally we have negative 12x plus 10x. Negative 2x. Negative 2x, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What next? All right, drop down the 8. So that won't let me erase here, so hopefully you guys can still see. All right, so if I bring down the 8, right, can you guys see that? Sorry, it won't let me erase the 5x cubed for some reason. Okay, so then we do it one more time, right? Mm -hmm. So what is 4x squared divided by x squared? 4. 4. And what is that going to go? On top of the negative. Yep. And we multiply by the divisor, right? So 4 times x squared is? 4x squared. And 4 times negative 2 is? Negative And so that's going to line up with the other 8, right? Mm -hmm. Better. That way it's not in the way. Okay? So we're subtracting. So this will be negative, this will be positive. 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. Negative 2x minus nothing is? And then negative 8 plus 8 is 0. Okay, so this is it. Now why, why do I know this is it? Yeah, you can't, I mean, this 4, or does x squared fit into x? No, right? It's bigger. And I don't have anything else to drop down to help me, so this is it, right? Okay, so what is your quotient here? Yes, the quotient is 3x cubed plus 5x plus x, or plus 4, right? 3x cubed plus 5x plus 4. That's the quotient. What's the remainder? The negative 2x. Okay? Alright, any questions?